I'm just uh, going to spend a short amount of time taking you through this excellent calculation that's being prepared by Turan uh, Babakan, who's uh, an Excel user, uh, an Excel Calcs uh, user. Uh, he's donated this calculation and it's absolutely fantastic in my view. Um, it solves any frame problem. Um, so I'm just going to run through a very trivial problem just to show you how easy it is to use. Uh, first thing I, I've done is I've set up some geometry of um, six nodes there and uh, the position of each node has a coordinate and the coordinates I can set in here so I can update those positions. Uh, let's uh, just move one around here. Okay, let's put it back to there. So I can position any one of these uh, dots on the screen. Then I can also fix these dots. So um, using this handy little selector I can choose uh, one of these uh, end releases. So 000, zero, zero means that it will be fixed in uh, translations in two directions and rotations in the third direction. Uh, let me just move across here to show you a little bit more about that. You can choose from any of these. Uh, using this connection here uh, then you'll be connecting elements. Uh, the connection through here will, will carry translations and uh, it will carry the moment. Uh, and um, this one here is uh, like a, a, a cantilever support system. So you can choose, I, I could choose to put a simple support here for example and uh, the simple support I might choose to select would be uh, this one here. Um, and watch what happens when I do that. If I go to the last node and I'll pop on that end support condition there then uh, there's a nice little symbol to show you what's uh, going on there in terms of the support but I've fixed, uh, fixed that in uh, the X direction and it's free to move in the Y direction, it's free to move in the moment direction. Uh, so a really nice indication of what's going on there. I'm going to change it back though to a normal beam to beam connection. Uh, then we're going to put members between the, 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 the six points that we've uh, created and these members are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, and if I just come back here, the members are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and they're going from uh, point 1 to 2 so 1 to 2 is this member here uh, it has a length of 3, that's just the distance between the coordinates uh, and then we can choose a section uh, now this is a nice little feature too uh, I can choose any one of these sections here by defining these parameters so in my case I'm dealing with uh, tubes and uh, so I just need to define the B and the A parameter. Uh, so here we go, I've defined the B and the A parameter there and it will calculate automatically for me an area and a second moment of area. Uh, that looks like it's zero but uh, it's just how, the, how it's formatted. If I put that in scientific notation I think we can see um, Okay, there is actually something calculated there. Uh, we've got a Young's modulus uh, for the members, each of the members here. So I've defined, for each of these members, I've defined uh, where it starts and where it stops, uh, and what the section uh, properties are and the material. Then I can define loads. Now, in this case, I've just put a vertical load of 10, but I can uh, play around with this. Uh, I can put a moment, say, on this point 5 here. If I just pop that there. Um, okay. Um, it's struggling just a little bit to display what I want to display. Let me just take this back here. Okay. Uh, so uh, that was node 5. I put a moment of 230 newton meters in this case. Uh, but I, obviously I can position them anywhere. So I can put uh, a, a, a point load or a point moment at any position on the model and I can also put some stiffnesses if I wish to define some springs for some sprung supports. I can put some spring stiffnesses at any one of these uh, locations here. Very nice feature. And I can also define uh, an imposed deflection. So I can impose a deflection of uh, let's say uh, two millimeters 
uh, at node 4. Uh, I don't need to consider it at the moment. Uh, and I can also... I think I've taken you through all of those now. Let me just... Let me just try to control myself here. Yeah, OK. That's uh, We've got uh, imposed displacements. We've got imposed rotations as well there. So we can we can impose loads at particular points or particular nodal positions. But we can also introduce any number of uh, loads that act along the member. So I can introduce a, a distributed load in this case. And I can add it at any point on the member. Uh, you, you obviously have to go through each one in turn. Uh, 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 we can have an axial distributed load. So this is a force that's going to run in the same sense as the member itself. Um, and I've got something defined there. I think I'll delete that for now. I don't really need it. Um, Moving forward, there's a number of point loads can be defined. Uh, a number of point axial loads can be defined. A number of point moments can be defined. Uh, and we can also impose some displacements at a particular position along the bar. And we can even put a temperature distribution. Uh, and that's all the member loads. Um, so once we have that, we can have a look at our results. Uh, and our results at the moment I can show the uh, undeflected shape, which is here, or I can put on the deflected shape. So that's the deflected shape. Remember, I'm just lifting this point up here by a little bit. Uh, and I can work out uh, the bending moment. I'm going to look at bending moment in span 1. Um, uh, and I can shift it up to span 2. That should be a constant bending moment all the way up, which it is. Span 3 span 4 and span 5. We can even see a little one there. Um, we can scale the deflection if we like. We can, uh, if, if we want to try to make the thing clearer, so um, let's move that down a little bit so we can make it clearer to see what we're doing there. Uh, or we can reduce to uh, just um, true scale, which is x equals 1. Uh, we c we've also got here uh, support reactions. So I've worked, or the, the calculation has worked out uh, the supporting moment and the supporting uh, reactions at this point here. Uh, and we've also got deflections at each of the nodes there, which is clearly what's given us that deflected shape. So I hope you can see that this is a really nice tool for just kicking up a quick finite element model and uh, to interrogate and to find um, solutions to frame type problems uh, and I think the calculation is absolutely superb. Thank you very much Turan Barbican.